For more videos on people's struggles, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. On December 20th, the Ethiopian rebel group, the Tigray People's Liberation Front, or the TPLF, announced that it would withdraw its troops back into the Tigray province. This is a key turning point in the war which began in November 2020 when the TPLF attacked a federation military base in Tigray. Over the course of the year, the conflict has caused a massive humanitarian disaster which was compounded by allegations of the TPLF seizing aid trucks. There have also been a lot of allegations of human rights violations. The TPLF now claims that its bold act of withdrawal will be a decisive opening for peace. What have been the trajectory of events that have led to this development? How has the fighting developed in recent times? Ilya Samare, editor of Horn of Africa TV, answers these questions. Let's begin with events uh, the end of June, June 29, to be precise, when the government of Ethiopia uh, declared a unilateral humanitarian ceasefire and withdrew from Tigray uh, for several purposes, uh, primarily to give the peasants uh, during the rainy season a chance to plow their uh, farmland, uh, and uh, secondly, uh, to give peace a chance, basically a moment of reflection on all sides, especially the people of Tigray to reflect. Uh, but what happened was that immediately upon the withdrawal, the TPLF, this, emboldened by this, decided to launch massive offensives in all directions, west, uh, south, east, towards the Amhara, the Afar region, and then westwards towards the Sudanese border. So that's what's been happening during the past, uh, say, from beginning of July up to recent times, five months, over five months. And the TPLF initially made advances in some fronts, particularly the Amhara front to the south and the Afar area. Uh, but it made fierce resistance, of course. Uh, during this time, uh, there was no, uh, no considerations of peace at all. It was all belligerent talk on the part of the TPLF. And of course, the international community, so-called the Western countries, the US and the European countries, uh, didn't say anything during this time about uh, negotiations. Uh, so it kept advancing, uh, and as it advanced, uh, massive atrocities, uh, human rights abuses, massacres, uh, to which the international community again, again gave deaf ear. Uh, during this time, also, they were bragging that within two, three weeks, they would reach to Addis Ababa. So, and they were saying, uh, their, their top leaders were saying, and on record, that there is no uh, nobody to negotiate with. Uh, initial, essentially, the central government is crumbling. That's what they were claiming. So bellicose, belligerent uh, tone of voice was the only thing that we heard. But uh, beginning of uh, early November, the government forces regrouped uh, massive mobilization, total mobilization. The prime minister himself uh, decided to go to the war front as commander in chief, prime minister Abiy Ahmed Ali, that is. And so the fortunes were reversed quickly. And uh, you saw within weeks that uh, the TPLF forces way overstretched beyond their home base of Tigray. I mean, hundreds of kilometers far away, their logistics lines were ex uh, overextended. Uh, their uh, troops were also decimated, overstretched on, on all fronts. And uh, within uh, a few weeks, they were routed uh, and fleeing helter-skelter helter towards uh, their home base. But in this period of time, the past couple of weeks especially, the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, in uh, alliance with the regional militias of the Afar and Amhara regions, uh, encircled uh, these, uh, you know, uh, forces of aggression from Tigray, invasionary forces, and uh, I must say, uh, it was a total decimation. So, 
to, for the TPLF now to declare that they were uh, withdrawing to give peace a chance is laughable and hypocritical indeed. So it, it is not that uh, they are giving peace a chance by withdrawing, they were forced, they were routed to, to flee. And thus, at this time, the tone has changed and they are appealing uh, to the United Nations, to the Western patriots to save them, uh, to declare, uh, you know, no fly zone and what have you. That, that's the situation we are in right now. In light of this offer, what is the position the Ethiopian government is likely to take? What are the ways ahead for peace and what might be the requirements? Well, uh, the Ethiopian government is saying that they have been for peace all along, that this war was not of their doing. It was imposed on them. It was a treasonous insurrection act of the TPLF that ignited the war. Uh, TPLF, mind you, that at times was uh, openly declaring for secession. Uh, and so under these circumstances, having given chance peace, all the chance, having tried all avenues, the central government has no option but to see to it that uh, this uh, uh, subversive force uh, be completely disarmed and is not, no longer poses a threat to national sovereignty and stability, and uh, that all the actors that were responsible for Massive, massive atrocities, uh, violations of human rights and uh, war destructions have to be brought to justice. This is a position of, of uh, the government of Ethiopia. Uh, the, at the same time, they have uh, initiated a national dialogue. A commission has been appointed by the parliament, a commission for national dialogue. So all issues uh, pertaining to you know, the political uh, uh, situation in the country, all con controversial or contentious issues will be discussed. All actors will be invited to the table. And through this national uh, dialogue, uh, national reconciliation and a path forward will be charted. So this is the only option that the government sees as a way out, as, as a peaceful way out. But the TPLF, uh, you know, warmongers that have been responsible for this massive destructions have to be brought to justice, is what the government is saying. And uh, I think within the next uh, few weeks, this uh, adventurous uh, warmongering of the TPLF will be brought to an end and the culprits, the criminals, uh, war criminals brought to face justice.